effectively, uh, understanding from Ms Walsh that effectively our potential purchase of this LNG Act uh, is a driver in the uh, development of uh, plants for liquefaction, in the production of a terminal in the United States, and it is around to what extent, and it is, I would say, different from the importation of mixed source gas. Effectively, LNG terminals, as I understand it, can only be used for LNG, so this is us specifically prioritising and investing in the global infrastructure around liquefied natural gas. And I'd just like a comment as well in relation to not just how that weakens the local campaigns in relation to fracking, but on a global level, and perhaps the, the colleague from DCU might comment on this, given that the United States seems to be intent on withdrawing from the Paris Accord and the Paris targets and the climate targets, are we effectively facilitating actions which won't necessarily fall under the climate but will accelerate action, um, both in terms Professor of McMullen, I'm going to bring you upstream in on that impacts very and global target very, reductions. And again, uh, like others, I've been struck, 90 million is peanuts, and, and I've been very struck uh, by the fact of, given the many areas, the many sectors affected, the many strong cases being made about areas that will need transition support, that the 6 million just transition fund, when compared to the 650 million envisaged in the case of a no-deal Brexit, it's very striking the difference in terms of that. Obviously, the timing is different. But my core question to you um, is, while there's uh, differences of opinion, as you've heard, uh, around the issue of the extent to which uh, carbon taxing is uh, incentivizes or engages with behavioral changes. The, that's not actually the rationale that was used around its introduction. The core economic rationale, really, around it has been um, around the fact of uh, environmental externality. That's the economic, the fact that the costs, the social, the environmental costs of fossil fuels have been borne by society and effectively we've subsidised an artificial commodity price over a long period of time. That's the actual rationale that was used in terms of initially bringing this in. In that context, given that that's the rationale, shouldn't it be the case that every penny of the carbon tax, not the increase, which is attached to an incentive logic, but every penny of the carbon tax, all of the 35 uh, euro, for example, should be ring-fenced to deal with those external costs, so for mitigation uh, and for adaptation. So effectively, should all of the 35 euro that is attached be uh, immediately and, and clearly designated, given that that's the logic? But in the IPCC report, one of the clearest major changes in land use, I think a little supplement had to be added to the graph at the top, as I understand it, to show the 800% uh, increase uh, in use of nitrates in, in, in as one of the major changes, 800% of the last 50 years. So perhaps I'd also appreciate, and I'll group my questions, but if you could come back in terms of just how urgent addressing that issue is on the global level. Um, because it's a huge outlier in terms of the, it's one of the major interventions. It's more than four times any other single change has been the increased use of nitrates. And again, um, while I'd appreciate, and I won't make, uh, ask Mr. Callaghan to go ahead around the various ameliorating measures, again, I don't need to have those outlined again, but specifically wondering what is, or is there a time or a path in terms of Ireland moving away from looking for derogation? In relation to uh, the issues of peatlands were identified as one of the highest core uh, ways that we can store carbon. Um, I, I won't dive into the natural heritage, the, the de-designation de uh, de of natural heritage areas, which is currently being debated in the Shannon, which I think is a huge regressive step. Um, simply speaking about those those uh, peatlands which are already not covered as natural heritage areas, which have been drained um, either for agricultural use or drained for forestry use, are there plans around the restoration of some of those um, and, and what's the, the scale in terms of uh, the planned restoration of those to a peatland function and to that carbon sequestration function? And in, I think, section B43 of the IPCC report, natural vegetation restoration is mentioned as something uh, that's important. And of course, pollinators have a key role in that. So I guess that question of how does the National Pollinator Plan, how does pollination feature in the plans that we're hearing about around land use, it's obviously crucial in terms of uh, the restoration of natural vegetation. It's crucial in relation to um, uh, our ecosystems and our forests, but it's also crucial then in relation to horticulture, which has been mentioned previously. So in terms of on a global level and on a national level, how are we... Pro 
kind of prioritizing actions around the pollinator pathway and their intersection. 